somebody may say oh i am so ordinary person i will never be able to hear 100 crore shlokas so it doesn't matter ekaikam aksharam pumsam out of 100 crore shlokas now let us understand shloka shloka means there are 32 aksharas in one shloka how many aksharas are there 32 every shloka has got four lines each line is called one pada prathama pada dvitiya pada tritiya pada chaturthi pada every shloka has got four lines and each line is called pada and each pada has got eight aksharas like for example the this one charitam charitam raghunathasya so there are eight aksharas charitam raghunathasya shata koti pravistaram so each line you will see there are eight aksharas or eight syllables so first of all lord rama's activities are described in 100 crore shlokas so forget about hearing 100 crore shlokas here it is said that ekaikam aksharam one akshara there are 32 akshara in one shloka there are eight akshara in one line not even one line one akshara you hear ekaikam aksharam pumsam mahapataka nashanam all the sin categorized as mahapataka there are eight levels of sins we have learned and mahapataka is a very serious level of sin mahapataka nashana even hearing about one akshara one syllable is so powerful about lord ram it can destroy all the mahapataka so that is the greatness and here in we can see beautifully uh, here in uh, shri ramayana in the valmiki ramayana what we see in the valmiki ramayana is what valmiki has described after hearing from his spiritual master shri narad muni originally the original ramayana was spoken by lord himself in the hayagriva form there is a form of lord narayana lord vishnu lord krishna is called hayagriva the horse incarnation that hayagriva form of the lord spoke about the original ramayana to lord brahma and when hayagriva the lord supreme lord when hayagriva spoke to lord brahma he spoke in 100 crore shlokas and this is what matsya purana says and shila prabhupad mentions this in one of the shrimad bhagavatam parpat that's why it is said shatakoti pravistaram shatakoti when supreme lord hayagriva spoke ramayana it was spoken in 100 crore shlokas to lord brahma and lord brahma same ramayana repeated to his uh, disciple also his own son narad muni and narad muni heard from swayam brahma this 100 crore shlokas and now that narad muni has come to the ashram of shri valmiki rishi and in the valmiki rishi's ashram valmiki rishi is asking to narad muni तपस्वाध्याय निरतम तपस्वी वाग्विदाम नारद परिप्रच्छम वाल्मीकिर्मुनि पुंगव दिस इज द फर्स्ट श्लोक ऑफ वाल्मीकि रामायण इन द फर्स्ट श्लोक ऑफ वाल्मीकि रामायण इट इज सेट दैट वाल्मीकि ऋषि परिप्रच्छम हि इंक्वाइर्ड फ्रॉम हिज गुरु नारद मुनि tapa swadhyaya niratam narad muni is always engaged in tapasya and he is engaged in swadhyaya swadhyaya means always studying 
about the supreme lord and his activities tapasvadhyaya niratam niratam means he is engaged he is always engaged in tapasya and swadhyaya such narada muni and he is also vagvidam vagvidam with means expert one who knows so what does narada muni knows he knows he is expert about speaking vagvidam vagvidam varam there are so many people who can speak so well among such expert speakers narad muni is the best narad muni is the top most because he expertly speaks about supreme lord he is so expert that when he speaks about supreme lord to a totally illiterate person even that illiterate person is able to understand about god narad muni is so expert that he is is able to speak about supreme lord to the most sinful person like mrigari and mrigari is able to understand about the spiritual life and bhakti and who is supreme lord narad muni is such a vagvida that means an expert speaker that he can even speak the complicated topic called supreme lord uh, the the ultimate object of the vedanta sutra to a small boy to dhruva maharaj narad muni is so expert that he can speak about the supreme lord to what to speak about a small boy called prahalad he can even speak to a child which is not even born that is prahalad when he was in the womb of his mother what to speak of all this unborn baby and this born baby small baby like dhruva maharaj all these things he can even speak about the supreme lord to kings hariyashwas daksha prajapati sons like this narad muni is expert in speaking so vagvidam varam you see valmiki is demonstrating on very important principle from whom should you ask questions you cannot simply ask questions from auto rickshaw wala from somebody your friend circle your relative no of course you can ask it's not that uh, auto rickshaw wala can't be a spiritual master but he must be a tapa swadhyaya niratam vagvidam varam naradam paripapracham sach narad muni paripapracham papracham means questions valmiki is asking question from narad muni who is expert speaker who is always engaged in tapasya who is always engaged in swadhyaya valmiki muni pungavam such a great sage called valmiki he is asking question ramayana is starting with a question is starting with question what is his question his question is very very important question konvasmin he is asking konvasmin sampratam loke gunavan kascha viryavan dharmagnyascha kritagnyascha satya vakyo drida vratah my dear spiritual master narad muni please tell me konvasmin who is that person sampratan loke at the present valmiki muni is asking this question and he is telling tell me about a person who is there at the present moment not that some in the past or somebody will come in the future no right now who is there means they are talking about their present tense in treta yuga konvasmin sampratam loke in this world not somewhere else in swarga loka satya loka in sutala loka or somewhere in vaikuntha no in this world <coughs> at this present time who is that person gunavan who is full of auspicious qualities and he will not simply tell gunavan and leave it he will go on telling which are those qualities he says that viryavan the most powerful person sometimes we come across people who are who have good qualities but they are not viryavan they are not powerful people he is a good person 
but what is the use of good person is they like a show bottle is like uh, some show doll in the shop you keep it is only for showing it only looks good but you can't do anything with it so people may have good qualities but uh, they can't implement it you require strength to implement it that is viryavan you also require capacity to implement good qualities gunavan viryavan dharmagnyascha okay there are person who is viryavan but what is the use of power if he does not know what is right and what is wrong so he should be dharmagnya gnya means the one who knows so he should also know what is dharma what is ultimate aim of human form of life dharmagnyascha kritagnyascha not simply knowing dharma he should also be able to follow that dharma kritagnya he should be krita means uh, follow it implement it not only implement it if anybody has done any good to him he should also be able to remember those things he must be grateful person sa and uh, satya vakyo he should always speak the truth sometimes people speak lies in their favor manipulate <clears throat> no this person should always speak the truth dridavrataha if he has decided something that i will do that he must be fixed in it not that morning you decide something and afternoon you already changed your mind such a person is called, is not called dridavrataha so now valmiki is asking tell me about such a person i want to hear about that person and his his list is not end he is going on charitrena chako yuktaha his character must be spotless nobody should be able to find fault with his activities his character must be spotless character and sarva bhuteshu ko hitaha he must be thinking good about every living entity now you may say okay sir there is somebody who thinks about good about his family members you know generally when uh, you become a king or you become a minister you will think good about your immediate family members or maximum extended family members or maybe your own caste people community people maybe your own district or maybe your own uh, state or your own country but maximum you may think about all the human beings sarva here it is said sarva bhuteshu this person should think good about every living entity ants birds beast human beings animals he must be thinking how to do good to everybody sarva bhuteshu hitaha hita means you should think about their good not just human beings and you know some some selected animals remaining animal you cut their throat and you eat no sarva bhuteshu hitaha vidwan he must be expert in all kinds of knowledge vidwan kaha ka samarthascha simply he is expert no he is samartha he is also capable of making sure that that knowledge is put into action samarthascha kaschaika priyadarshana he is he must be he must be looking good and not just looking good he must be looking good to everybody at all the times in all situation under all circumstances kaschaika priyadarshana ha atmavan he must have self control jitakrodha he must have conquered his anger dyutiman right he said that he must be glowing he must be radiant ko anasuyaka he must not at all be envious of anybody else kasy bhishyati devascha jataroshasya samyuge he must be conquered his anger but if he becomes angry first of all he is he has controlled his anger but for whatever reasons he becomes angry even devata should be scared of facing him such a person you tell me see this he is asking all these things now he gave all this list of qualities said i want to know about such a person who is there at the present moment in this world so this is valmiki's question to narad muni and now shrutva chaitatra lokagnyo after listening about all these things right valmiki narado vachaha narada he spoke after listening about uh, all these qualities from valmiki he said he said that 
Shriyati Miti. He said that, Oh my dear disciple, Valmiki, whatever list you gave me, is very difficult to get. Where do you find a person with all these qualities? If one quality is there, another quality will not be there. You know, during the marriage, people go to see boy or a girl. And they go on the sea, they'll say, ha, ah, girl is looking good, but uh, I think uh, maybe uh, she doesn't know how to cook or maybe she doesn't know. No, boy is looking okay, but uh, his salary is not enough. So you then they will say, see, everything will not be there. You should adjust. He's mm -hmm. getting good salary, no? Looking a little bit, nose is this side, that side. Uh -huh. Your uh, eyes are squint. It's all fine. You're a little bit adjust. The hair is not there, enough hair is not there, it's a little bald head. You should adjust, you know, he has got good property. So if you have one quality, you will not have another quality. But Valmiki said, my dear Guru Narad Muni, don't tell me about a person if he does not have all these qualities. That person, I want to know, should have all these qualities, not some 1%, 5%, 10%. 10 all these qualities should be present all 100%. Such a person I want to hear about. Please tell me about such a person. Just see. Huh? It is not an ordinary quality and uh, he is making it very difficult. That is why Narad Muni is saying, Bahavo durlabha shaiva. He says, Bahavo durlabha. Durlabha, very difficult to get this kind of qualities. Right? Tvaya kirtita gunaha. Whatever you have described, they are very difficult to get. Mune, O oh Valmiki Muni, he says, that these are very difficult. But I will tell you. I will tell you something. Narada Muni is going to surprise his disciple. It's very difficult to get. But I will tell about a person. Not only whatever list you gave. Much more than what you list you gave. And he says that. What is that? He says. Ikshvaku Vamsha Prabhava. Ikshvaku Vamsha Prabhava. Somebody who has descended in the dynasty of Ikshvaku. Ikshvaku Vamsha Prabhava. Ikshvaku Vamsha Prabhavo Ramanamo Janai Shrutaha. He has descended in the family, in the dynasty of Ikshvaku. And he is famous as Ramanama. He is famous in the name of Rama. There is a person called Rama who is descendant of Ikshvaku dynasty and is famous, right? He says, and he says, Shrutaha, listen, his qualities. Now Narad Muni starts describing. Niyatatma, the first quality that Narad Muni ta tells, tells that he is the God, his supreme God. Niyatatma, he is self-controlled. That means he is independent. He has complete independence. Who controls him? Nobody. Then he is controlled by whom? He is controlled by himself. If he wants to control himself, only he can control. There is nothing else in the outside world that can control him. All of us are controlled by laws of nature, by time, by weather. You know, we fall sick and we say, oh, actually because of weather I have fallen sick. I am under the control of weather. I am under the control of time. People will say, oh, now it is uh, night. I will meet you tomorrow morning. Now we can't do this. We are under the control of day and night. So we are always under the control of so many things. We are under control of our age. Oh, I am old. Now I cannot lift it. Oh, I am old. I cannot see it. You see, we are not independent. But here, Narada Muni begins speaking about the Lord Rama. Ramayana begins with the question of, Valmiki and Narada Muni answering it, the first quality says Niyatatma. Niyata means control. Atma means self. He is self-controlled. 100% independent. So the Supreme Lord, God is 100% independent. Niyatatma, Mahaviryo, His prowess, His power, is unlimited. Is Mahavirya. Nobody can challenge him. Mahavirya. Dyutiman. Hey, Valmiki, my dear student. 
you also ask me dutiman this rama is dutiman how is dutiman ramayana describes later when rama walks into the assembly the whole assembly becomes glowing when rama sits on the simhasana simhasana becomes glowing it becomes effulgent his effulgence is so great that wherever he goes that place becomes effulgent you see for, for us they you know there are products fair and glow they say that right now you are not glowing you are dull you apply this cream you start glowing so you need somebody to make you glow they'll say you apply this face pack your face starts glowing and there are so many videos on youtube it says how to glow how to make your face glow here dutiman his glow duty means glow that you know that prabha that effulgence is natural to him not only natural to him whatever comes in contact with lord ram becomes glowing just see this just like the fire fire is naturally glowing effulgent and anything is nearby fire also becomes glowing you like you keep something next to a lamp dia that also starts glowing so imagine this uh, fire or the sun is not even on small spark of the supreme lord and that itself is glowing this much how much the supreme lord is self effulgent self glowing dutiman dutiman and he is also dhritiman dhritiman means he is fully fixed in his mind he is fully fixed nobody can change his mind he is steady fast washi washi means he has kept everybody under his control he is not under anybody's control everything and everybody is under his control and when it is said mahavirya how do we understand this ram as mahavirya is so powerful is so great there is one mountain called meru meru parvata this meru parvata sumeru parvata is so great mountain in the samudra manthana pastime shrimad bhagavatam says all these uh, devatas indra chandra surya and all these ashtadikpalakas they all went to bring that meru parvata to make it as a churning rod and they they could not even move that meru parvata 1 inch that meru parvata is so big and so powerful that mahan mahan devatas could not even move 1 inch and that meru parvatas meru parvata is one portion of that uh, sanjeevini parvata and that hanuman lifted it carried it without any difficulty that hanuman who moved that meru parvata which was not moved even 1 inch by devatas that means you can imagine what powerful hanuman must be and that hanuman comes and sits at the lotus feet of this person how powerful this person must be mahavirya next he says he says buddhiman he is buddhiman is very wise he is not some foolish sometimes there are some powerful people but they are very foolish the decisions they make are some foolish decision but here is a person buddhiman right because uh, valmiki didn't ask these are all extra qualities that narad muni is speaking buddhiman and next he says buddhiman um, the he is giving buddhiman neeti buddhiman neeti Ni, he also neeti man buddhi man and neeti man neeti exactly neeti means the one who knows the the 100% difference between right and wrong good and bad correct and incorrect there are many re, neeti raja neeti stri neeti yuddha neeti like this there are many many neetis and this person lord rama he knows all the neetis so much so that when vibhishana came from lanka 
he left his brother ravana and he came there was a big discussion whether to accept him or not to accept him because he has come from enemy's camp and how ram took decision to tells demonstrates how ram is neetiman he knows all the neetis buddhiman neetiman vagmi 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 means one who is expert in speaking lord ram is expert in speaking what is the meaning of this the meaning of this is when lord ram speaks it's not that only few people were able to understand and appreciate it when lord ram speaks not only greatest of the great devatas like lord brahma lord brahma is a greatest devata in the in this material world creation he is a very very topmost personality and he understands what lord ram speaks even brahma is is eagerly waiting to listen to lord ram when lord ram speaks when lord ram speaks not only brahma the mahan mahan great sages in ayodhya when in the assembly when ram starts speaking everybody becomes pin drop silence and start listening to lord ram even children listen and it is also mentioned in valmiki ramayana that when rama spoke even ants even ants were happy to listen to lord ram that was the capacity of lord rama speaking ability his speaking is so pleasing to sages his speaking is pleasing to devatas his uh, speaking is uh, pleasant to kshatriyas shudras vaishyas brahmanas children ladies even ants that was the speaking ability of lord ram vagmi shriman shriman what do you mean by shriman shriman means opulent person rich person lord ram he is so rich how much rich he is you see this material world is grey like this when you go to any hotel in the hotel uh, they will say what kind of room you want it's starting with the dormitory dormitory is very ordinary you know room and then you will have uh, some you know some non ac then you will have ac then you will have suite so there will be multiple levels in one hotel that hotel is a small example to understand how the universe is created just like in the hotel there is a luxurious suite star hotel suites will be there like kitchen will be there sofa set will be there inside a uh, micro oven will be there all facilities will be there there will also be some ordinary you know dormitory there will be no facility like that in the material world the, when it comes to opulence when it comes to wealth the highest opulent place is satya loka brahma loka that is brahma loka and what kind of opulence is there in satya loka shrimad bhagavatam mentions it is mentioned na yatra shoko na jara na mrutyu na tir na chodve garute kutashchid yat chitta toda kripaya nidam vidwan duranta dukha prahavanu darshana what is satya loka what is the opulence of satya loka na yatra shoko na jara na mrutyu in brahma loka or satya loka there is no old age there is no death can you imagine a place where there is no old age there is no death na shoka there is no kinds of shoka there are no kinds of any miseries in the material world it is material world means there are problems but in the material world the top most place called brahma loka where there are no problems there are no miseries there is no old age there is no death so nice such a place brahma loka no udvega no anxiety but only one problem is it is temporary right like krishna says what is that uh, janma mrityu jara vyadi dukha doshan darshanam and next it is it is uh, uh, ashashvatham 
ओके देर इज नो देर इज नो दुख देर इज नो जरा देर इज नो मृत्यु बट देर इज जन्म एंड इट इज अशाश्वत एनी वे बट वेन इट कम्स टू मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड द द काइंड ऑफ ऑप्यूलेंस दट ब्रह्म लोका हैज गॉट नो अदर यू नो अदर प्लैनेट्स हैव गॉट इन द फोर्टीन प्लैनेट्स स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम सत्य लोका दिस 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 भूवर लोका वेर वी आर लिविंग इट इज क्रिएटेड फॉर वेरी ऑर्डिनरी पीपल very ordinary living entities and they live in a very ordinary place called this material world and this shriman lord ram when during his time the opulence of the earth became equal to brahma loka we can't understand this like today we can't understand that around for 1000 years back or whenever this foreign invaders came india was so rich it was called soneka chidiya it was so rich today we can't see it we see that how vijayanagara samrajya in hampi they they were selling diamonds and rubies on the road side and there was so much of gold it was being sold that was being recorded by a chinese historians when he visited today we can't even see it we can't understand how it was like that we will not understand how during ramachandra's kingdom he made this earthly planet which is considered to be one of the slum in the in the brahma's creation the standard of the opulence what is the how much uh, opulence is there in the in this material world earth it is like on slum in the slum what can you see no proper roads no proper house it's all uh, very poor poorly built you can't see any wealth there so such kind of material world lord ram he made it is equal to brahma loka's opulence shriman just see this that's what narad muni is saying shriman shriman shatru nihar shatru nibarhana what do you mean by shatru nibarhana any guess shatru nibarhana means what shatru means what enemy. enemy wherever enemy is hiding he will go and get them out and he will eradicate them sometimes you may say yeah yeah i will i will attack my enemies if they are visible to me but ram lord rama is not like that shatru ni barhana means wherever enemy is hiding the example that this uh, you know where uh, the mula ramayana gives is when lord rama shot an arrow <clears throat> sugriva asked rama see there are seven trees tala tree sapta tala you have to bheda bhetre you have to pierce that seven trees and let then i will accept that you are powerful to fight with my brother wali wali is very powerful so lord ram shoots an arrow and that arrow goes and pierces all the seven trees and not only pierces the seven trees it goes and it it circumambulate the whole universe and goes inside the patala loka and some demons will be hiding in the patala loka it kills them and then it comes back to his this one shatru ni barhana wherever enemies are hiding lord rama will go and eradicate them shatru ni barhana and then <clears throat> vipulam so vipulam sa vipulam sa means his uh, his his shoulders are very broad just by looking at that broad shoulder you feel confident here is a person who can protect me vipulam sa mahabahu if he simply stand up from his seat his hands will so long mahabahu bahu means his his uh, hands arms are very long and of such a person is called mahabahu kambugriva his neck is so beautiful like kambu kambu means the conchal how conchal is so beautiful you see it is so uh what do you say thin and it is sitting in such a way it is called kambu griva kambu griva is a description to say that somebody's neck is very beautiful and maha hanuhu hanu hanu means this chin maha hanu means he is so beautiful that his chin is like 
you know it's it's so curved it's so shaped that it's the people they they uh, they try to get that chin fixed or they try to make their cheek and then the chin fixed in such a way that they look very beautiful you know they get plastic surgery and all that so here lord ram is maha hanuhu his chin and cheeks are very beautiful such a person he is and next narad muni says <coughs> maho raksh maho maho uras kaha uras uras means chest uras means chest maha uras when he walks he will not walk like this he walks with his chest up with full bold confidence his chest are you know always up with power and with confidence and with that you know kshatra tejas maheshwasaha ishu ishu means arrows ishu means arrow this he is he has uh, something behind his back that 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 ha, that is a place to keep his uh, arrows you've seen that lord rama has that some uh, special uh, some tank kind of a thing in which he can keep his arrow mahashwasa means his uh, that the thing which has got arrows which can never get over it will never get over you keep taking keep taking the arrows will keep coming so maho maheshwasaha guna gunadhajatratah he is uh, gu- sorry it is gu- it is gudha gudhajratratah gudhajratah means it concealed collar bones this collar bones are there they are they are not uh, ugly and come out they are in such a way they are making it his shoulder and his chest look very beautiful arindamah ari ari means enemies damah means one who is capable of destroying one who is capable of defeating arindamah and next it said ajanu bahu janu janu means your knees ajanu bahu is his hands are so long that when he stands he can touch his knees this is one of the purusha lakshana mentioned in the shastra supreme lord beautiful one of the personality is that when he stands up his hands can touch his knees you all can try whether your hands whether you are able to touch your knee it's not possible you cannot touch it is one of the purusha lakshana out of the 32 lakshanas of the supreme lord mentioned in the samudrika lakshana this is one of the lakshana that it is ajanu bahu ajanu bahu sushiraha sushira shira means head sushira means he is like one topmost beautiful head of everything next sulalata sulalata what is the meaning of sulalata sulalata lalata means uh, uh, when he walks the way he walks is so charming that everybody feels like just keep looking at that person and suvikramah whatever action he does he is always victorious there is no question that he got defeated at any time see valmiki asked him a question tell me about a person who has got all these qualities and narad muni is telling who is that ikshvaku vamsha prabhavo rama nama janata this rama who is ikshvaku vamsha prabhava who is there presently and he has got all this qualities what to speak of 16 qualities valmiki spoke he is speaking much more than those qualities and is going on is saying he is saying samaha samaha he is equal to all. he never does partiality and then he says sama vibhaktah angaha his body is so symmetrical his lord rama's body is so symmetrical that everything is accurate how much it should be it is that much 
you know sometimes some people they look beautiful only the face is beautiful but the hands and legs are not appropriate the height is not appropriate or uh, no hands and legs are nice but the stomach has come little more so like this but it is said sama vibhakta angaha anga every parts of lord rama's body is is accurate and it is perfect snigdha varnaha very beautiful word snigdha varna his varna his bodily complexion his skin color is so charming is so attractive snigdha varna his devotees keep looking at him keep looking at him keep looking at him they never get satiated snigdha varna but at the same time pratapavan you know what is the meaning of pratapavan tapa what is the meaning of tapa tapa means heat the non devotees the enemies of lord rama they cannot look at ram even for one minute the devotees of lord ram for them lord ram is snigdha varna snigdha varna from his body so much kanti the glow the beauty is coming out and the devotees are keep drinking the nectar of lord rama's beauty uninterruptedly but the same lord ram his enemies can't even see him even for a minute why because he's pratapavan tapa means heat so much heat comes from his body from his color that his enemies one minute they see their eyes feel like burning tapa pratapavan pratapavan and then he says pina vakshaha pina vakshaha pina vakshaha means with wide eyes his eyes are aksha he is a very wide vishalaksha lakshmivan he is actually narayana because he is a lakshmivan he is he is the husband of lakshmi devi shubha lakshana with all this lakshanas are there next he says dharmagnya satya sandhascha is dharmagnya he knows you asked me valmiki he should be dharmagnya and this rama ikshvaku vamsha prabhava he is dharmagnya he knows what is dharma and then satya sandhyasya because valmiki asked satya vakya he should always speak satya vakya nard muni is saying this person called rama he has made sandhan with satya he will never speak the lie he will always he will speak the satya satya sandhasya and then prajanam cha hito rataha rataha he is always busy thinking good about praja he is always thinking how do how do i do good for my praja my citizens he is such a kind of a king praja because valmiki said sarva bhuteshu hite rataha see here is a person right yashasvi this valmiki didn't ask but narad muni is telling this rama he is yashasvi what do you mean by yashasvi yasha means famous yashasvi means the fame of this person rama is not just in ayodhya it is in the whole universe it is not just do, during the treta yuga oh ram is so great it is not only when ram was there everybody was speaking about you know sometimes people say this person is very famous no sharukh khan is very famous okay he is very famous but uh, uh, before sharukh khan's birth nobody knew how great there will be person called sharukh khan after he dies and after 50 years 100 years nobody will know greatness about this person right how great actor he was and all that so but lord ram is not like that his greatness his fame was famous Ram was famous before he he even appeared in Treta Yuga. He's famous even before the yugas like Dwapar Yuga, Satya Yuga. Not only during this this Maha Yuga, the fame of Lord Ram was famous during entire Vaivasvata Manvantara. Not only during one Manvantara, the fame of Lord Ram or he's famous. not just during one manvantara in all 72 manvantaras not just all 72 manvantara that is one day of brahma 
all 365 days of lord brahma not just all 365 days of brahma is entire 100 years of brahma lord ram is famous is there any person like that who is famous like this in the past present future that is the meaning of yashasvi such a person this this rama before even he appeared in treta yuga he was already famous lord ram his activities charitam raghunathasya shatakoti pravistaram he is so yashasvi yashasvi and next jnana sampanna he is the embodiment of all kinds of knowledge shuchi shravaha he is clean person internally and externally he is clean he is honest there is no duplicity and samadhiman he is sama towards everyone he never discriminates he never thinks oh these are my people for them i will be one way and these are all not my people for them i will be different way no prajapati gamam people during uh, rama's time they were saying he is not our king he is prajapati he is taking care of us like prajapati prajapati means the one who has created you you know somebody may take care of you but the person who has given birth to you will will take care of you in a much better way right so king the lord rama was so good he was literally taking care of his citizens like prajapati prajapati samam shriman dhata ripur rishudana he is a dhata he has taken the oath of protecting everyone by ripu nishudana ripu means enemies that's why the, the, the lord rama's time it was so conquered the place the ayodhya was literally held true ayodhya means there is no yuddha no war nobody can even think of attacking because the ripu nishudana is ruling ayodhya rakshita jeeva lokasya dharmasya parirakshita in this way lord ram is protecting like this la, uh, these are the qualities that narada muni spoke and told valmiki that such a person is there right now ruling ayodhya ikshvaku vamsha prabhava rama nama his name is lord rama so val uh, valmiki heard about lord ram from his guru narada muni after hearing about lord ram valmiki he wrote this valmiki ramayana in 24000 shlokas but originally how big ramayana is 100 crore shlokas so this is lord ram and when we go on here next few days about lord ram we will understand how great this personality is just one quality what is that yashasvi he is so great is so famous his activities are so unlimited not just during treta yuga in dwapar yuga in satya yuga not just during one maha yuga previous maha yuga in entire manvantara not during one manu in all the 72 manvantaras not just during one brahma's day all the days of brahma or entire brahma's life span people keep discussing about lord rama not that he will be forgotten lord rama will never be forgotten nobody can uh, you know take away the fame of lord rama yashasvi and one letter of lord rama about his life you hear you discuss mahapataka nashanam just imagine how great and that person is going to appear on ram navami just imagine how auspicious day it is what a wonderful day it is how should we celebrate it how should we you know happily celebrate the ram navami this person's celebration it is so we have to really really prepare our mind and consciousness to welcome lord ram with this we'll stop here Shri Ramachandra Bhagavan ki Shri Valmiki Ramayana ki Jagat Guru Shri La Prabhupada ki Nitai Gaur Premanande Jai Jai